Hello everyone, Darren here, and welcome to a brand new series in Ixion. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this game, it's basically like Frostpunk, but in space. You're building and managing the Tycoon, a spacecraft built to reach faraway stars and find a habitable home for the human race. Now, cut off from Earth, you'll have to find a source of renewable food, energy, and water as you explore the expanse, uncovering the mysteries of what happened back home, but also who else survived. You can directly control your ship by moving it across various systems, sending out probes to find different resource deposits, but doing so requires a lot of energy, so you may have to power down your economy to move those vast distances. Then you've got to watch your hull integrity as it can be damaged the further you go, requiring constant maintenance and repairs. At the heart of the game is your workforce, the people doing those repairs. They can become distrustful of you, causing strikes or other events such as theft or fighting. Laws can then be passed to sort of quell the uprisings or just to increase the quality of living while you work to progress a tech tree to make life easier. It's really awesome. It's a game I've been following for quite a while, so I've been very excited for its release. So we're going to start here with the prologue at first. It might be a little bit slow just at the beginning as we build up and we get introduced to the various game systems. And as well, the story is very much a focus for the game. There's actually no sandbox mode as of yet, but after this episode, the prologue will sort of be done and the game will really open up and give us the freedom to explore new systems and it'll pretty much feel like a sandbox from then. It's worth mentioning as well that I'll be uploading this series quite frequently and if you're a channel member you can get those episodes early in bulk as I upload them. If you're not then they'll just be released every one or two days apart as normal. Make sure as well to like the video, maybe leave a comment and subscribe if you haven't already if this is something that you want to see more of. Alright, looks like we've arrived aboard the Tycoon. So let's begin. Welcome on board, passengers. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are docking into sector one of the Tycoon space station. Waiting for it to be powered on by our personal assistant, Eden. Now, oh, there we go. Now, Eden is very, very quiet in the background right now, and that's for good reason. I've actually kind of Lowered the dialogue volume just for the beginning of the game here because there is a huge exposition dump at the very beginning of the game Several characters are going to be mentioning lots of stuff. That's really kind of irrelevant I mean, it's great world building. I highly recommend you listen to it if it's your first time playing But I want to get the prologue kind of over and done with in one episode So I just don't want to be sitting back listening to too much of this, but I'll summarize it We can expand it and I can tell you the most important bits trust me Trust me when I say a lot of its fluff good fluff but fluff nonetheless, that we don't necessarily need to know. It's like explaining the reasons why we know how many resources there are and stuff. It's like, I get it, you know? It's fine. <laughs> so, we've also on the left side of the screen got a bunch of tutorials. The game is super tutorial friendly. Very easy to pick up and play and learn. I sound like I'm sponsored, but I'm not. I just really enjoy this game. I think it's very good so far. So, just wanted to mention that that is all there, but I've played through the prologue before, so I don't necessarily need to be looking at too much of the tutorial stuff, but if I ever get lost or confused, I can open that up and check things as they come at me. Alright, so, one of the most impressive things about this game is that we have a fully 3D environment that we can kind of rotate around, look around in, zoom in, zoom out, all of that kind of cool stuff. And that's pretty standard fare, but the really impressive thing is, boom! We can go out and check the Tycoon as it is orbiting Earth right now, and the game looks stunning. If we just hide the UI for a second, look at it. Now I'm not... I'll let time play. Let it rotate a little bit. Oh yes. I'm a sucker for sci-fi things and it just looks so, so cool. But then also we have the planetary system map where we can see where we are relative to the other planetary bodies in our solar system. We're next to Earth. We have a, another space vessel actually kind of close by. The moon, Mars, and Saturn all have different events on them right now. We can send ships out to that. We can go to them ourselves if we want. And then when we do go to things ourselves, this is not just merely a backdrop. We do literally move through space and we can see it getting smaller in the distance and stuff. It's so cool. But first, let's introduce you. And how cool is that even? Just the way it zooms out and zooms in, I think is so cool. All right, anyways, enough fanboying. Let's go through the resources on top of our bar, the UI, get everyone up to the same page of what's going on, and then we'll kind of move forward and start actually playing the game. So very quickly, on our resource bar up in the top here, we have a refinement economy logistics game. So we have iron that converts into alloys, we have carbon into polymers, silicon into electronics, then we also have hydrogen, waste, ice, and food. We then have cryonic pods, which contain survivors, they're found during expeditions, 
and they need to be thawed out, basically. And then we have science, sort of a research to go through the tech tree, our overall population, and then it's the population per sector as well. That's why there's two numbers, and right now they're both the same. We're just in the one sector. If we hold, for instance, like this, we can go rotating through the sectors. As you can see down in the bottom left, you can see where the camera is facing at any time. Right now, we just have the one sector. We can just pay to unlock the other ones through resources and then expand into them, power them on, and all of that. It doesn't even take that long to get into your next couple of sectors as well. So, next thing then would be power. So if we hold tab, we can see everything that's currently consuming power. It's just the docking bay right now. We can always just power things down individually, should we wish, which obviously stops them functioning. Saves on the power for a little while. Maybe you want to fill up batteries or whatever the case may be. So we're currently consuming 14 out of a capacity of 60, leaving 46 available right now. You can see it broken down per sector as well also. Okay, so... The next thing then would be hull integrity. That's not going to matter so much, at least early on. In the prologue, I don't think it's affected at all, but right after it, it, it is. Trust is basically how much the people at the station trust in our command. If it goes all the way down, I believe we lose. Um, we're building trust every day, which is good. And it's, again, not going to be that important to the prologue, but then as time goes on, people start to get a little worried. It's going to be a big problem, trust me. All right, down bottom left, as I said, we have the overall sector view. We have the population, how happy they are with the different effects affecting them, the current working conditions. These are all things to kind of consider, especially when we get to the area dealing with laws. Consumption, battery power, water in, in the uh, reserves. We then have a fleet management screen, population management screens. There's currently 12 people working and 85 as total workers available. We then have the current meal cycle, which we'll see that when we kind of put down food. And I think that's basically it. We're all caught up. So just to start off before we get to the next transmission, I'm just going to hook up a road connecting to our docking bay. Don't even need, really need to do that, but we'll put down a workshop. So this is like a constructing building. It sends out a mech to go and build things for us. So we need one of these to start, basically. So just pop, pop it down right there. Shouldn't be a problem at all. And then we'll just build a stockpile, which allows us to store up resources. Without this, you actually can't store anything. You have to go collect things and store them. So we're going to assign it. They can only store one thing at a time. So alloys for this one, and maybe polymers for this one. And uh, we'll just hook it up with the little road. And we'll leave it at that. All right, time is now playing. We're now being introduced to Giovanni Battista. And we'll just skip through what he's saying as well while things are happening in the background. Yeah, so effectively what this guy is saying is your first objective is to begin settling up essential infrastructure on board the Tycoon, meeting the environmental conditions that are required to support your crew. Having laid these foundations, you will then oversee the installation of the Vol engine and perform a short test jump to Proxima Centauri. Upon arrival, your research teams will carry out a brief survey of local space, gather a few rock and coal dust samples, fire up the colonization protocol, build, you know, begin building the foundations of mankind's future, yada yada, etc. Now, the most important thing here is he's talking about Eden, our personal assistant, how we're able to measure people's trust, that people have the data listening system, the DLS. Long story short, the Marduk Council worked damn hard to pull this mission together ahead of schedule. So toe the line, do as you're told, and bring the tycoon back in one piece. Leave the grand gestures and saving of mankind from ecosystemic destruction to us. That's what's happening on the ground in Earth right now. Now, just really quickly, we've connected the two stockpiles. So the stockpiles are open and up and running. We've assigned them to something, so now we can go collect various resources around us. Let's just click and do that. One last word of advice. We don't all think like Vanir Dolos. He's the CEO. As of yet, no human law has been officially established amongst the stars. That sounds like an opportunity knocking to me, which is allow, how, you know, how we kind of figure out our own laws. If we want to work people really hard, there's no reason we can't. Legally. All right, we're all good. Tutorials about resources, storage, various supplies, and transport. All good. Okay, Emma Klein is going to be the next person to talk to us. Again, we'll just skip through here. She's the communications and data specialist. So, she's given us our first objective. Dolus has made it abundantly clear when it comes to security. Given the importance of the tycoon, we must have full control over what's happening inside here. So this is why we have the DLS, the data learning system. This is how we're able to measure people's trust, how we know what they're going to need, how we distribute food. Basically, why we have a UI. <laughs> 
Um, so, before I get ahead of myself and start writing history, Dr. Munchie, our lead medical expert, wanted me to bring you to our attention... Sorry, me to bring to your attention a possible side effect of vol jumping. Basically, it can cause early onset dementia. He believes that it has the potential to accelerate that, although it's yet to be proven. His recommendation is for you to immediately send any crew members that are exhibiting uncharacteristic or symptomatic behavior to an infirmary. So yeah, that's just basically letting us know people are going to get sick and unwell. All right. Remember that all of your actions and choices are being recorded by Eden. We're not affiliated with any national or even international organization. The only people that you're answerable to are those of us who sit on the Murdoch, sorry, the Marduk Council, who representation, who represent the collective interests and ambitions of the company. Done. All right, how are we doing? We've got our first event. Let's check it out. Administrator, Tycoon crew members are currently unable to access food supplies. Neoncond protocols directly, uh, sorry, direct the construction of a mess hall. This building is designed to distribute food to our, from our stockpiles to the crew. Guaranteeing access to food supplies would reaffirm your competency as an administrator. My competency in terms of reading today is terrible. Good thing I was skipping over a lot. Um, Alright, so. Various requests. That's basically missions and then mess halls. So we've now unlocked the ability to build a mess hall, which serves up to serves food for up to 500 crew members every five cycles. So every five cycles food gets distributed. Now a cycle is down here in the bottom right in terms of time and it's obviously just one revolution of the Tycoon Station. So five revolutions I guess pretty much equals 24 hours. Not that you really have to worry about that. We more or less count in cycles and it's just important to know that every five cycles people eat. So we'll build a mess hall. Just pop it down right next to the docking bay as well. Now another interesting or important thing about building in this game is that everything is refundable. So if you make any mistakes and you want to move stuff later on, there's no real penalization other than the time lost in terms of building things. So right now we have this building, the workshop. This allows for a mech to go out and build things. You can actually only build one thing at a time unless we build more of these. So basically one person is in a mech building at a time supported by this building. So if you want to build three things at a time, we need three of those buildings. So it's up to us how fast we want to be able to build. And once things start really filling up, we can kind of get rid of it. Now the stockpiles, they actually have five workers. And they're the little forklifts that you see going back and forth between places. So you can only move five things at a time from a stockpile. Until we get like upgrades and stuff later on. I presume. I actually have never done that, so I don't know. But I think it does talk about how you can store more later on. I'm assuming you might get more of those forklifts as well. All right, let's just load up a few more poly um, polymers. I was going to say polygons. Set the stockpile to store food. Right, so we need another stockpile then. Let's start making food. Or storing food, I should say. So maintenance. We'll pop it down right here. Moving it out to the right a little bit so it's more central. Well, actually, thinking about it, this should really be next to the mess hall. But it's fine. We can move these things later. Everything's going to be reorganized eventually. All right, we've got another transmission coming from Henry Bargeville. Or Henri. I believe he is French, actually. Let's skip through. So, take the liberty personally arranging an exchange at a courtesy with the Urshanabi. So, if you remember, the Urshanabi is the ship that's just hanging around out here. A ship in high orbit belonging to one of our commercial allies. The Ashtangites. The Ashtangites? Let's just call them the Ash. Even though they are a small organization, the Ash are important partners who share the same pragmatic, moralistic, and spiritual outlook as we do. The Urshanabi will provide us with a source of food, whilst carrying out the Tycoon's initial testing. By making it the first exclusive trade partner of the Tycoon, we will demonstrate to our long-term allies that Dolus wishes for them to share in our successes. So assign a cargo ship, is our next thing, communal dining and space exploration. So build a cargo ship and a sign ship. Let's do it. So inside the docking bay, we have three ship types, cargo, science, and mining. We'll go with a... We'll start off with the sign ship first, actually, and then get the cargo ship. It's going to require 45 polymers in total and six workers. So those workers actually leave the station. They don't get included in terms of needing food from here or anything like that. I guess they just kind of stay autonomous, although the ships do arrive back periodically for maintenance. Um, but it's just worth noting because they're not a workforce we can use anymore. You know, they're out on the ship now. All right, cool. So what do we got? This is now registered for food. So food is basically going to get collected from here, stored in here, 
and every five days get delivered into the mess hall. So ideally, we just build it next to the mess hall, but I have a feeling a lot of this stuff is going to move around anyway later on. So I'm going to just build a little road all the way out here, and another one there. And this will connect all of this so we can actually grab it all. And we'll just make a storage thing nearby so we can go collect it. A lot of it's just going to be alloys. So we just want to declutter this entire area and then decide to move them later. Now, we've also got speed controls at our disposal. On the hotkeys on PC, anyway, 1, 2, 3 is the very speed control. So we can time 3 speed. And then we can also have the hotkeys F1, F2, F3 to go out to the exterior view and the system view. So our ship is getting made at the moment, the science ship, and we're waiting. Click on the food icon above this. Oh yeah, whoops. <laughs> Forgot to actually click to collect the food. My bad. Forgot you have to do that. So what do we got? 93. So these things can actually only store up to 100 food. We've got another event. Some crew members are lacking quarters during human history. Unnecessary homelessness has always been an indicator of civilizational decay. Do not reproduce humanity's basic mistakes. Absolutely. Ensure that all crew are housed within 12 cycles. So we've got about 90 people. Each building, I believe, store stores, <laughs> houses up to 15 crew members. So what I'm going to do is bop, bop it down all the way in the corner here. Leave a room for a road around it. One, two, so that's going to be uh, 30. And then we've got 60. That should keep us good for a long time. So it's 30, 60, uh, 90, and 120. So it's more than we need, but we're prepared for the future. In fact, we could just pause one, maybe. Well, technically we could pause two, right? So we'll pause two. And we'll just let them go when we've got a little bit more time to build. So we'll just drag that out here, drag that up here, and across. And they'll just hook these up to a little road just so we can declutter this area like I said before. Now, what I'm going to do is, seeing as we're only building one thing at a time, we're going to build another workshop so we can build two things at a time, speed this process up a bit. So this is going to be high priority building. It requires 20 alloys. Hopefully if that gets built, we can actually see the uh, little mech on its way out now, building the roads. So he's doing his thing. And he's our only guy building. So after the roads are done, hopefully this will be priority. That's getting its alloys right now. He'll go and do that, and then we'll have two of them out on the go. Speeding up dramatically. Alright, so provide quarters for the crew. 79 citizens in total. So yeah, we're overbuilding a little bit. But that's okay. We'll definitely get more in the future anyway. I don't think the mess hall proximity matters. I don't think they actually have to physically travel over. I think it's done by sector. Alrighty. So we have our science ship built. So what we can do now is hop out to the system view. Our science ship is called the Ripley. Cool. Can we actually rename it? I don't know. Maybe not. So, let's just tell it to go to... Well, let's go to the moon first, seeing as it's really close by. It only takes 0.2 of a cycle to get there. And off it goes. Alright, the science ship has arrived at the moon. So, I think now I can turn up the dialogue volume. I don't know if we're going to get any more exposition for a while. Or if we do, we can always just skip over. Alright, cool. Let's check it out. Summary of intelligence of the abandoned b base. The base is out of commission. Auxiliary systems are operational and could be used to restore power. Transmission from the Ripley's team to our scientists is saying, We have reached the UN base. It's abandoned and depressurized. The surveillance system is still operational, awaiting orders. Exploit the vulnerability. Hacking into the surveillance system, the Ripley team will access the base's control systems and retrieve any confidential data present. Hell yeah. All right, it's going to take one day to do that. Is it just me? Is this game awesome? <laughs> I know I'm early, but goddamn, I love it. I think the atmosphere as well is so cool. All right, let's speed up time a little bit. So we've got our problems down here. Homelessness, people who are hungry. Food should get delivered into here. Yeah, so now we've got eight food in here. So like I said, eight food will get stored in here every five cycles. It's required. Eight food is required to feed all 79 crew members in the sector. A meal is served every five cycles. I initially got confused up here because it says enough food is stored for seven meals. And I was like, that's only seven people. But obviously a meal for everyone is every five cycles. Anyway, it's all good. Now I get it. 
but at first I was a little confused. So just if you're ever wondering, you can always just check the building itself. Eight food required to feed everyone, and it only stores up what it needs to feed people every five days. It doesn't overstore it, it keeps it in the stockpiles. And then up here, of course, you can just see the sector, how much is coming in, how much is going out. So at the moment, we still have stuff technically coming in because we just piled a bunch of stuff up. But over time, it'll realize we don't have anything anymore in terms of income. Sign ship Ripley completed its stuff. We hacked into the main computer systems as you ordered and retrieved several relevant research papers and data sets. So we got 10 signs. Now we can dismantle the base and see what we can get out of it. It's going to take two more cycles. We're on cycle 10 already. So our second constructor is built, so they're both going to go out there building these things two at a time. And then we can tell them now to start collecting a lot more of this stuff. And just assign this to alloys and assign this to alloys. And there we go. So now we should have room for these things to be delivered. We've got all the little forklifts doing their job. Their jibs. Alright, so while we're waiting on that, let's just drag a road out this way and out to there. Just so we can get those boxes. And I think that's basically every box that we can reach can be got. Just depends where we want to store that stuff now. Ideally, storage in the center, I think, makes sense. Because that's where they go to get things to distribute it to various buildings and stuff. Cuts down a little bit of time, I guess. All good out here? Yeah, sorry, this is just flashing. I, I have noticed it does that. Although I don't think there's anything that's changed just yet. Now, oh, we did make our cargo ship. Sorry. So we need to actually tell it what to do. So inside of the fleet management screen, I guess we will hop out and do it up here. Fleet management right here. We can actually see how many resources are available for a cargo ship. So there's 12 food available, and that's because it's here on the Ushinabi. So 12 resources ready to collect. So it's a really elegant system. You don't have to like micromanage it. You just tell this, go collect food, and it'll auto assign itself by priority where to go and what to get. So it's heading out already to the Ushinabi. It's going to get that food and bring it straight back. No big deal. Now, you can actually have high, medium, and low priority. So, at the moment, we've just set a high priority on food, and that's it. And I think they're bringing everything back immediately. And we should see them pulling in. Yeah, they've just pull arrived back in. There it is there. And it's coming out and being delivered into the storage. So, that's how it works. You can actually see the ship coming and going, which I think is pr pretty cool. We'll just speed time up now a little bit. Alright, science ship. The base has been dismantled. Al although... Um, so I wonder what the UN think about that. Anyway, although most <laughs> equipment was damaged, we were able to prepare some usable resource for extraction. So 30 alloys and 90 science. So now we've got 100 science by the time it comes back. So they're collecting the science. It'll take a little while to do that before they get home or come home. All right, all good. And then again, so this is expanding as we're uncovering new things all the time. You can have a look at like the little mini map to go over the different sectors requests, making choices, you can't appease everyone all the time, etc, etc. So like I said, if I ever get bogged down or I want to look up something, I will quickly just open this up and read what's going on. Alright, what's next? Feed 100 crew, so we've already fed 79, and then collect science, and then build a tech lab. So that's going to be our next thing, building a tech lab. Now the tech lab building is actually fairly big, so maybe we'll get rid of this and this, and we can build it somewhere out here. Just thinking as well, maybe even next to the docking bay. You can actually dismantle the docking bay and move it if you want. It's a big building in its own right. Well, I'd say right around here seems like a good spot for the tech lab. So let's do that. So I'm going to say... Uh, road dismantled. Dismantle this road. Build another one here. We'll dismantle this in a moment once that one's done. And then build a tech lab there. It's going to take a lot of alloys. All right, let's speed up time. We're making good progress, I think. How's our stockpile currently? We have a stockpile max of 300. That's why I'm not clicking on everything right now, because I want to actually do it bit by bit. And then we can move our buildings around and put them in a more efficient place. Although I'm actually pretty happy with where we've got this one, so stockpile here again would be good. There and there. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Build a road that goes here and up and around. I will just assign this to alloys. Alloys. This is currently food. I'm going to tell this one to be food instead. So they'll empty this one out. And this one to be alloys. So they'll figure it all out. They'll move these things around. No big deal. Speed of time. So how many houses do we have? We've done the housing projects. So of course we can 
rotate around and have a look. You can see some people on the balconies and stuff every now and then. I don't know if things can catch fire. They could be disasters, actually. I guess we'll find out. I just know that people can be unhappy and unrestful. All right, we're still just waiting to actually clear the room to build this. Let's just, say, get rid of this road now. Building a road takes time, but dismantling it is instant. All right, good. 75 alloys being delivered by the little forklifts, and then the actual construction guy will build it. In fact, I think the construction guys... No, they're building it now. Yeah. So we can actually see him on his way. Driving his little mech forklift thing. It's obviously a simple looking game, but like when you really zoom in. But I think it looks really good from, obviously, just a little... Where it's really intended to be played from about here. And especially when you look outside, I'm like, holy crap. This looks so cool. And like I said, we're going to be adding solar panels, thickening up the hole. And you'll visually see this thing kind of change and grow, which is going to be exciting. All right. There are no active health buildings in Sector 1. Zero crew members are injured. So that's good, but we don't have an infirmary yet. So let's have a look. Uh, population, infirmary, 40 alloys, 5 workers. Now you got to remember, these things are all taking power. We could build it amongst the houses. That would kind of make sense. And it fits. So, Little infirmary. Alright, the last thing to do is just build a tech lab. We're flying through. And then obviously clean this place up. So I'm going to tell this not to store alloys anymore. I want them to feed into this, this place now in future. And I'm thinking just to clean things up in terms of our grid. Connect the road here, get rid of this bit, maybe move the second construction building next to here. So that way we just have a big construction area with uh, stockpiles and resources and stuff to all pull from. So let's clear this bit next. And we'll tell them to dismantle this. And get rid of that little extra bit of the road. Okay. Maintenance. We'll get our workshop in here now. Is that facing the right way? There we go. And then we'll dismantle this one. So we're cleaning it up, making it look a little bit nicer, neater. Uh-oh. We've had a blackout. So what we can do here is basically power down this thing. And we're okay. Let's have a little listen of what the guy is saying. Due to insufficient levels of electricity generation, Sector 1's power demand has overloaded. Stanford routines recommend that you construct an external solar panel to boost overall electrical output. Okay, so the saying we should build solar panels on the outside, I was just talking about that. Dolo's expert in compartmentalism and medicine, and a member of the Marduk Council. Just really quickly, we got all the science from our science ship out here, so I'm just going to send the science ship down to Saturn and see what's going on there. I'm glad to finally meet you, even in this digital manner. Your psychological test results were quite impressive. My friend and colleague, Philip Stanford, couldn't be here today, so I will take the role of introducing you to the final stages of the Vol engine integration. Before we get into that, however, we would like you to complete the testing station's exploration and enhancement capabilities. You'll then be able to be Okay, like I said, you've gotten a taste of the dialogue. Begin I'm just gonna fast forward it now. So, before we get into that, however, we'd like to complete the testing of the station's exploration and enhancement. You'll be able to begin researching the EVA airlock and access its compatibility with the Tycoon's core systems. Okay, so, that means in our tech lab, we need to power this on. So we're kind of low on power, so we'll probably have to turn off one or two of these little buildings here. The infirmary doesn't need to be on. And... I don't know. One of these stockpiles is probably fine to turn off. Yep. Tell that to empty out, and just let it go into one of the other ones. So I'll turn this back on now. And we're totally fine just within the threshold, and now we have our tech tree. So all the initial techs are done. 
the EKP engine, the Tycoon hull, stockpiles, etc. But now we can get the EVA Urlock. So we have 100 tech resources, and uh, it's going to cost us 30 to get this one. And then there's a bunch of upgrades that we can do. So these can be upgraded a little bit later on, which is why you might be wondering, like, why is it even here at all? It's because they can be improved and changed. All right, EVA airlock. Let's go. Two and a half cycles, no time at all. Uh, so this one, what was that doing? That's alloys as well. Interesting. Let's just see if I can start emptying that one out. I want to fill up the entire center first. Then we can add more if it's needed. The roads are a bit haphazard. Yeah, looking good. Looking good. Uh, we can continue building here, because we know that I'm going to need them eventually. Get those two extra houses down there. Alright, the Ripley has arrived in Saturn. A signature trace from an EKP system has been detected near Saturn. EKP technology is the exclusive property of Dolos, but records indicate that the company has not deployed any missions to this sector. The signature will soon enter the atmosphere of Saturn. So send a team to investigate or attempt to locate the debris in orbit. I'm going to say attempt to locate the debris in orbit. Once the signature is passed through the Saturn's atmosphere, the Ripley team will analyze EKP residues and verify the signature's origin. Let's go. Alright, this is almost empty now. How's our tech doing? 36%. Oh, we can actually see it right here. Awesome. Pretty good. Great UI so far. Alright, let's just speed up time. And we've got our two extra houses. We could probably build a couple extra... Oh my god. <laughs> Literally on the threshold of having no power. It's fine. That's why we're going to build the uh, EVA airlock, and that'll allow us to, I think, build the... If we can't already, yeah. The um, solar panels and things like that. That's what the guy was talking about. Alright, sweet. Almost done. Almost at 100%. This is now empty. We have still not even filled all that up. So I'll just decommission this and probably move it and get rid of some of the roads that are kind of sticking out a bit. Let's just hook this up to be a bit nicer as well. Alright, good. Tech is done. We have our EVA airlock. So, big building. Why can't it be placed there? It can't. Oh, the sign is blocking. <laughs> That's interesting. Hmm. I'll probably move the tech building over then eventually to make use of the space, but that's okay. Alright, let's just slam it down here. Yeah, it's gonna be a bit- I'm gonna do it though. I'm gonna get rid of this building and move it over. I am that OCD. Because it can fit in there. It doesn't matter about the sign for this one. And then we can actually move this over a bit if we wanted to too. Alright, so event available. Reports have been received relating to Bargeville Clean. Optimization protocols on board the Tycoon. They indicate that crew members are being overworked. Although Dolus employment contracts make it clear that a high degree of flexibility is required. Got like a Twitter situation going on here. This situation is beginning to take its toll on morale. It would be pragmatic to deploy additional crew members or reduce the number of concurrently active workplaces. Yeah, so I think it says something... We'll have to check in the tutorial again at some point. But something about that you can overwork people and overassign people. You can like have multiple buildings and have not enough workers for it, but then they become very unhappy very quickly. Anyway, request additional staff from the Urshanabi. Absolutely. Let's get more people in here. Alright, so we have to bring the new workers in. So to do that, we have to go back out to the this, is, uh, this view. Open up fleet management. We've got 20 extra crew available, so we'll tell them to get picked up as well by our cargo ship. And we should see that going really quickly to the Urshanabi. feel bad dismantling all this, but it seems relatively harmless and quick to do it. Takes a little bit of time from our constructors, but we're not going to be building that much early on anyway. Uh, so yep, yeah, build the EVA airlock is the only thing to do, and then power it on. 
So we're just waiting for that to get done, and that's been moved. So I'm going to rebuild the tech thing. We'll move it over now. Tech lab. Oh, yes. Look, it fits perfect. And then I'll move the airlock at some point, too. The docking bay. Sorry. In fact, we can move that right now, too. <laughs> but I'll wait until these are built. Hopefully, though, people will agree that it's nice and compact. You know, it's all about maximizing your space this game, I think, because we've got very limited space within the Tycoon to work with. And we're going to need a lot of stuff. So is the Saturn thing done? It looks like it is. A signature trace for the EKPC... Oh, we read that already. Send a team to investigate or attempt to locate. Oh, that might be a little error. We'll just click that one again. Yeah, I think they mentioned that there might be one or two bugs. This is the pre-release build uh, to do with events specifically, so I'm guessing that's it. Hopefully it does get done this time around. All right, let's just keep speeding up time. We have our EVA airlock. It costs 12 energy to use it. So I'm actually going to power that off, but let them keep building it. We can't have both on anyway. So that's why it wasn't too big of a deal getting rid of it. Specialization. Sector specialization. A sector becomes specialized in a discipline when it has a certain amount of buildings of the same type. Specializations give you bonuses that support the associated sector. You can see a building's type by clicking on the building. Once unlocked, a sector specialization can be viewed in the data listening system policies window. Let's work your safety. Hmm. I'm actually not sure where you look at that, but it doesn't really matter right now, I don't think. Uh, so, I wonder why it told me that now, because maybe it's, you can have building specialization space. Oh, right. Sector 1. That's why I'm just wondering, where do you open up the thing that says, let me specialize the sector? Uh, it doesn't really matter. I'll get bogged down if I keep thinking about it. I'll look it in between episodes, just in case I'm missing it. Anyways. So, uh, build a section of solar panels. All right, let's do that next. So out on the exterior construction, we have solar panel. So we can build really far out in the future, but right now we can just get this one. It's 10 polymers and it gives us 40 extra power. And you can see it sort of gets slotted onto a few different places around here. All right, hull repair is gonna be, is gonna stop while we're building externally, but we don't actually have hull repair right now anyway. We're in low earth orbit, so it's totally fine. But it's when you're out in the vastness of space, that's when you start getting hit by little bits of debris, I suppose. Uh, okay, are we all good? I think we're good. This is still waiting to get done. We're building on the external stuff at the moment. 53% done, or 60%. Wow, it's going very quickly, actually. All right, there we go. So we just got ourselves extra power. Finishing implementing the Vol engine via the build panel in the external view. All right, so Vol engine allows the Tycoon to traverse self-similar space, a hundred alloys. All right, there we go. It's under construction. That never gets old for me, man. Being able to do this. Just actually hopping into the literal sector. I think it's so cool that they did that. It could have just been a fade to black job, but they actually did it, you know? All right. Uh, so we've just taken on extra people. They came in, by the way. We have 99 now here. So we'll turn on these houses. And no one should be homeless. Nope, no homeless. That's good. Turn on the infirmary. Why not? So the little issue has gone away. Any more? Yeah, we've room for more alloys. So we'll go collect the rest. Excellent. The science ship is done. Let's see, did it work? It did work this time. Okay, good. We're unable to recover information on the signature's origin, but can confirm that Dolus technology is being utilized by unknown parties. The thieves! They're pirating our stuff. Is that it? Uh, maybe not a great option then, because we didn't really get anything from it. Okay, so the Ripley can now head all the way out to Mars. And it'll take quite a while to get there. Can we see it? There it is. It's on its way. 3.8 cycles. So, in the next episode, when we actually start kind of exploring 
other systems, let's say, um, what you can do is you can send out probes and it'll actually tell you what kind of resources are around in the various points of the system. So imagine this, but it's a completely blank screen and then you have to sort of hover over with a, pro a probe to kind of see where there are good resources. Then you launch the probe in that probe in that direction and then it'll kind of uncover whether there was iron, carbon or whatever around that place. Then you have to actually go there and then start harvesting it. So. It's really interesting how you can kind of explore, like, systems and stuff. But unfortunately, you probably won't see it until the next episode properly. I thought I would just talk about it right now. Alright, so we'll let them do their thing. They're on their way. Meanwhile, inside... How's the food situation? Excuse me. It's ten food per day now. Or, sorry, per every five cycles. So we've only got a little bit left. Incoming transmission. Because of your kit, please ensure that they have suitable accommodation once you reach Proxima Centauri. Yeah, they've authorized the dispatch of new crew members and food supplies. Bring the remaining workers for the Urshanabi on board the Tycoon. So that's going to be happening automatically, I think, at the moment, because the fleet management is still set to go collect another hundred people. Wow, okay. I don't remember that. That's quite a lot. Um, so, in order to prepare for that, we'll have to build them more accommodation. I'm gonna cut the road here, actually. Well, we'll let them deliver their stuff, then I'll cut it. We've got an event over at the food. Food supplies are dwindling. Despite claim control protocols, some crew members have become aware of this. They are worried food will, so food will soon run out. Making a public commitment to increase food production would squash any simmering rumors about your management skills. Pledge that there will be three insect farms in the Tycoon within 10 cycles. Yes, absolutely. No, we can turn this back on as well and start continuing the tech tree. So, probe launcher, 30 research. Let's go. And then we need, what was it? Three insect farms. Serves food for up to 500 crew members every five cycles. Oh, sorry, that's not the right thing. Oh, am I an idiot? Was it in here? Oh, it's right there. Research that as well. So, insect farm first, then I guess the probe launcher. We'll get that food set up for the guys. Buildings such as the insect farm periodically generate food as long as they're powered. Insect farms will not operate unless they have storage to go to. That's fine. So people are coming in all the time. We have 99 right now. Oh, there's actually more food coming in with them and 20 people. Their new accommodation is being built. Are they? Everyone has a home, so that's good. Boom. All right, great. Loving it. Let's just get rid of this again. And let's add on a few more. So how many people are we going to have? Like 200. So uh, three, six, nine. So we need about... 12 houses, I guess. Let's just duplicate that side with this side. So it's like two little estates that look the same. And then we'll just pause a couple of them. All right, cool. Bunch of new houses. All surrounded by the, uh, or surrounding the infirmary, in case anyone has any problems with that. Looking good. Looking good. So, impending starvation in nine cycles. That's fine. Don't worry about it. They're not going to starve. No one's going to starve, ever, in this playthrough, okay? <laughs> it's my commitment. So, what do we got? We have the food, which is closest to the mess hall now. Polymers, alloys, alloys. So we can check things just by hovering over them like this, actually. There's actually some waste building up. I've never... Waste is a resource generated by factories and food production buildings. It can be recycled into alloys, electronics, polymer, water, and even food. Oh, wow. Didn't know that. And the external construction. Did we build the Vol engine? It looks like we did. Bring the Tycoon's remaining workers from the Yershinabi on board the Tycoon. So what I'm going to do as well... Don't know if this would be crazy or not, but let's try it. I'm going to send the Tycoon over to Mars. All power from the main grid will be diverted to the EKP systems during the 3.1 cycle. Well, you know what? Let's get the food built first and then we'll do that just for the fun of it. So we're going to build food and then we're going to go to Mars and that way we can pick up our science ship instead of having to wait for them to come back. Although I think we have to go back anyway because I'm pretty sure we have to launch from the moon uh, to go to Alpha Centauri or Proxima Centauri. 
Looking good. We're getting a little low on alloys, though. Of course, we are building a lot of those extra houses. All right, I'm pretty happy with my build so far. I think it's relatively lean. Uh, one other thing I want to do is decommission this and just move it over a bit. Oh, their construction has been paused. Okay, that's okay then, yeah. So we've got the insect farm technology has been unlocked, so let's go food. Insect farm. Oh my god, it fits perfect. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Is it fine to place it here, or should we go there? I'm just trying to see. One, two, we need three of them. I'll just do it in this side then. One, two, three. I was just thinking because the mess hall is there, the storage for food is there. It's alright though, things seem to move pretty quickly. Alright, three insect farms. 60 alloys in total. So we have 163 right now, so totally fine. Gonna set this to be circuits, we're gonna need that in future. Alright, all good, all good, all good. Our sign ship has arrived at Mars. The UN has established a facility on Mars. Its crew are currently lacking the materials required to repair a critical fault in their oxygen supply system. They've submitted an official request for Dolus aid. Repair the fault in exchange for research or repair the fault in exchange for resources. I'll take resources. We'll assign the glue scap to do it. Yes, please. So 20 alloys is what we're going to give them. We're going to get something back. The different phases of preparation, calibration, and verification were successfully completed. You must Alrighty. Good news. Procedure. Oh my god. Protocols now deem you competent to gather resources, knowledge, and test colonization routines once you reach Proxima Centauri. Before you do so, we're going to talk to the CEO. All right, let's have a listen. I would do it. Is there anything I need to be doing in the background? I don't think so. We have enough, more than enough workers to work the insect farms. I'll tell you what, actually, I'd like to get moving, and then we'll have a little conversation with him so that while we're moving, we can listen to him talk. So I think that's probably what I'll do, but it's going to cost us all our power, so I want to just wait till this gets done, and then we'll go. All right, let's get moving. So we built our three insect farms. The people should be happy. Let's just go a bit further back. Tycoon, all the way up to Mars. We're gonna be going alongside our cargo ship, which has actually already left. <laughs> but yes, let's do this. All right, there we go. Our EKP is good. There we go. As I said, you can see that we are literally properly moving through space. You can actually see the moon way off in the distance as well. All right, let's have a listen. I'm glad to see that you have managed to complete your assignments in preparation for this unique moment in history. You must understand that this is not simply another chapter in humanity's story. The book of our... It's like, I'm going to turn him up a little bit more. On Earth is over, and we stand now at its epilogue. It saddens me to think that there are many who have yet to comprehend the reality of our situation. We've endured endless cycles of war, crisis, and famine. Still, the worst is yet to come. There are others like Dolos who have prepared for this outcome. But most of our kind remain sheltered from the horror of the predicament we find ourselves in. This pale ghost of civilization will wither and die, and with it, the tenets and values of the past. As we prepare to leave this system for the first time, perhaps we must decide which fragments we will pick up and take forward with us. Through Dolos, I am offering mankind an alternative means of survival. The Tycoon is a tablet upon which we will carve our new history. Do you recognize why I have done all of this? Having foreseen our fate, I became fixated on altering it. I set about fashioning the ropes and tying the knots that would bind together this magnificent ship. 
It is true that our time in this world is brief, but at least I can rest assured knowing that my legacy will endure for eons. Farewell, Administrator. For the few who stand in the light and the many who dwell in the dark, you carry the fate of us all. All right, so he's a psycho, um, but we're here. Good timing, right? We're at Mars. Now, just really quickly, that's the tutorial for moving around with the EKP. The power is now back on. Things can resume. So, notification, science ship Ripley has completed its action at Mars. Healthy competition. The oxygen supply system has been repaired, and the relationship between Dolus and our competitor is improved by 36%. 20 polymers, okay. So we exchanged 20 alloys for 20 polymers. Alright, looking good. Did we get everyone off this ship? Yeah, we have 200 people. Okay, good. Yeah, it seems like everything's good. Alright, we'll go back to the interior view. Moved it. So now we just have to go back to the moon. <laughs> Great. Well, I had to wait till the, um, 190 people, 99 people are pretty hungry, actually, so we should probably get them their food. Let them eat. Next service is in 4.2 cycles. Well, Okay, if they're not going to eat for 4.2 cycles, we might as well get moving back now. I just kind of wanted to show what that was like. And I think it's so cool being able to see the planet like in such good detail as well. Um, Alright, but we can speed up time this time. I didn't really speed up that much while we were doing that. So, we'll head back, get to the moon, and get ready for our first vol jump. Which is a bigger deal. So, straight to the moon. Curving, you know, we're kind of like slingshotting around the sun, actually. Curving inside of the orbit of Mercury. I wonder if we'll see it when we go by. 3.2 cycles. So when we arrive, they should be able to get their food. And we're off. Alright, triple speed. As we dart back towards the sun. Think of it as like a... Almost like a test drive. <laughs> That's basically what we're doing. Now something I'd like to do as well is we could build a second set of solar panels also. Maybe 15 polymers with those extra polymers we just got. So I'm going to tell them to do that. I don't think they'll get working on it until we arrive, though. But, you know, it's an extra 40 power, so should be good. Looks very similar to the original ones that we're putting on. Just another layer of them, almost. Oh, there's Mercury, is it? Oh, no, that is the moon. Wow, that was quick. That was super quick. All right, cool, we're here. So initiate a vol jump via the button in the planetary system map. So that's going to be pretty much it for the prologue, I think. We're going to get a little cutscene as to what's going to be happening now. But that is us done, right? We have built a nice little compact little area, connected it via squiggly road <laughs> for the scenic route. Bunch of storage things here in the middle, some insect farms to give us a little bit of food in the background, although we could do with having more. We certainly have more workers, thinking about it. Um... Yeah, we've got, like, room for 50 more jobs, so this just makes food for free. It makes very, very, very little, though. Uh, whereas in future, we can use water to make, like, much more, much more food generally. Yeah, so we'll have to see about that. And we do, with the extra solar panels, we'll have the power to build a few more of these. Um, and actually, tech tree, we want to be getting the probe launcher next also. So let's just begin that. All right, let's do this. So a vol jump. We'll move out to the exterior view. Oh, I don't think we can yet because we're waiting for... Well, let's just wait for the solar panels and then we'll do it. Almost done. And then, we'll... actually, I think you have to hop into the system view, but still, I kind of want to get this done before we jump. You don't want to be mid-construction building solar panels while you're literally traveling to another star. All right, done. We've got the extra ones in place. That's going to give us a boost of power. All right. Planetary system map. Vol engine. Ready for activation. All power from the main grid will be diverted to the engine during the 0.5 cycle charge pre preceding ignition. Let's go. With Ralph Stanford's procedures, all ships must return to the Tycoon before full jump initiation. The Vol is charging up. Everyone's on lockdown. Oh man, looks so good. 
Love it. All right, we're almost ready. Vol charge, 90%, 95. Let's begin. Ready. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been an absolute pleasure. That is such a cool representation of what it would look like. I think it's so cool. Just bending space. Ah, uh, yes. My favorite corporate concert. The Earth. Our home. She is unique. Held in its bosom are the ingredients of evolution. Bosom. Beyond raw survival, beyond the safety of comfort, we, humanity, pursue something greater. We have learnt persevered, shaped our knowledge from that which is found in the furthest realms of science. However, humanity has brought destruction to the earth, polluted its blood, choked its breath. Today we are paying the price for this. We know the taste of a dying world. But the earth is not to be our grave. A mother does not wish to see her children disappear with her. She wishes to see instead courage in her children to carry on dolos carries this courage we have gone further than any nation moved faster than any corporation hand in hand with those who like us carry that courage the tycoon station is both an epilogue of these endeavors and a prologue to humanity's next steps our council of scientists leads the vanguard they know, as do we all, that the survival of humanity now depends on what we glimpse out there in the dark. That we are masters of our own destiny. That we must go as a species bound together, pushing further into the unknown. We set sail on this new sea because there is hope to be found, horizons to explore, and because our very existence depends on it, I give you the stars. I give you the full engine. Let's go. This definitely won't go wrong in any shape or form. Also, there's no way you could just see it like that. Anyway, guys, that's going to have to be it for this. I hope you can share my excitement for this game. I think it looks awesome. I can't wait to get started now. Go around exploring, find out what's going on, find survivors, and become self-sufficient. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. What was to be a routine jump to Proxima Centauri to go collect some basic data, figure out colonization protocols, and then come back. We've come back to a very different solar system indeed. One where the Earth has been completely dried out, turned to ash from the looks of things, and a moon that has been torn apart, seemingly our own doing. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching, and remember, if you want to support the channel directly, you can click the Join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits, as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. You'll also get exclusive access to my Discord, where there's dedicated channels for each series I'm doing, and it's a great place just to meet others and make some friends.